God bless everybody tonight. It is uh, July 14, 2023. I found an extremely interesting article. I think it really pertains to what is happening. You know, I talk about a lot about Turkey and the leader of Turkey being potentially Gog of Ezekiel 38 and 39 and potentially even the White Horseman of Revelation and how he might go into an invasionary mode here in the next few weeks as we watch him abandon Russia, Assad in Syria, and the Kurds, and so I believe the evasion will start by an attack by, um, he'll go into Syria, that'll force the Kurds to do something, uh, that won't turn out really well, I believe they'll fall to the east towards Erbil, and then he'll go down and actually help Israel with um, Hezbollah and Hamas, you'll see him go down um, back basically into Lebanon, um, West Bank. He'll end up in Gaza as he's moving through Israel as a friend, and then he's going to actually go down into Egypt. That will probably signal that this is going to turn bad. Um, if you look at my uh, last video or two, I showed you a route that I believe he's going to take. Um, from Egypt, which they capitulate, and they aren't going to put up a fight. Um, he's going to end up in Lebanon. He's going to end up over in uh, Erbil or uh, Gagamela, um, which was an old battle um, that Alexander the Great uh, led. That collapses because well, it's the Kurds, Kurds regional um, capital city, and um, it's also a green zone, so that probably push us out of there. Once that collapses, it's going to collapse down to Baghdad and then over to Shush, Iran, where Turkey will actually eliminate both Kurds and Iran based on Daniel 8 prophecy. They'll end over in uh, Israel after that with 10 nations, um, potentially by the end of this year. Um, I say by potentially October. We'll see how that works out. But let's get into this article because this really, I believe, brings a lot of attention to what I've been talking about. So, if you go to the Nordic Monitor, this was just presented on July 7, 2023, a former private secretary of Erdogan claims Erdogan entered into secret agreements with U.S. and Israeli officers while establishing his party. So, if you know anything about Erdogan, um, you'll realize that he started out as a prime minister and then was um, elected to be president in 2002 and actually was initiated into that office in 2003. So Erdogan's been in office basically, he founded this party in 2001, which is what this article sort of gets into. And as he's moving into prime minister and then into president because he had a quick ascension, like he was groomed for this, that possibly 20 years ago they were grooming him for potentially what was coming up today which is really interesting that that works that way but it does seem to work that way um, but he's been in office for a long time um, he reassumed office in 2014 and then he had a re-election again um, he's had multiple elections but we had a new election in, on May 14th of uh, 2023 and then he gained a new five-year term and so this hasn't been updated yet, but um, he's been here a long time. So I think that's really important as we go into this article. So let's check this article out. Now, I can't collaborate any of this information. I just present it. You have to go out and do your own research. But it falls in line with what I've, what I've been talking about and how I believe he's been talking for 10, 12 15 years about bringing back the Ottoman Empire and this caliphate against the Jews and the Christians and how that's going to affect us as we move forward. So, um, Erdogan addresses a speech during his campaign rally in this uh, Sultaganzi uh, district, and I'm probably destroying names here, so just work with me, of uh, Istanbul on May 12th of 2023. Turkish President Erdogan prepared to meet with hardcore supporters on May 12th of 2023 to showcase 
enduring strength in the face of his toughest election challenge of his two decade rule because he's been there 20 years um so in the speech in parliament on wednesday the former private secretary and advisor to erdogan alleged that secret negotiations took place between erdogan and american officials as well as Israeli agents, interesting term, before the establishment of his political party in 2002. So, just going back to Bush's era here, okay? Um, and he's, it looks like in this article that he's been groomed and placed into this position he is in now. And, I believe God's placed him in that position for a reason, and we talked about how he might be the white horseman of Revelation and how that's going to affect us as we move forward. Wow, he looks young in that picture. Claiming that Erdogan rises in politics was a result of a secret agreement or secret agreements. This Kalmez, a member of the opposition party, I don't know what that is, I don't know how to say that, so... Um, or good party, responded to allegations from a ruling Justice and Development Party AKP lawmaker that U.S. Joe, uh, President Joe Biden supported in opposition bloc in general election held in May. So, you know, this is affecting us now. It's been going on for 20 years. It's now being exposed, like a lot of these whistleblowers are coming out. They're actually exposing these people because things just aren't looking very good out here. And I think they know that they need to expose these people. Uh, Comez, who served as Erdogan's private uh, secretary during the process of establishment, establishing the uh, AKP between 2000 and 2002 and later becoming a lawmaker stated he knew all about all of Erdogan's visit to the U.S. during the period of time and had detailed knowledge of whom had been uh, contacted and the nature of these contacts. During that period, I am very well aware of the negotiations that took place with the Prince of Darkness. It's interesting how he's stating this stuff. It, you know, it's like this is a bad thing that they groom this guy. They know something's coming up. They're talking about Erdogan as the Prince of Darkness and how this Richard Pearl and what his uh, was achieved in return. So this comment is talking about Erdogan in a fairly dark light here and how he's going to potentially be groomed into this position and now later 20 years later um, we see that he might actually be a potential problem as we move forward um, and now that he's a like I say now he's abandoned um, uh, through the Sweden thing he's abandoned Russia Syria and the Kurds because now they're making that footprint of NATO larger and Putin's got you know, this is going to affect grain and uh, transportation of fuels and all kinds of different things over there. Um, there's been uh, different agreements that are going to be affected. And so Putin's basically being squeezed out of the Middle East at this point. And I believe that since he's entrenched in uh, Ukraine, there's not much he can do about that. So it's just interesting. They're, they give you this um, letter. I can't read it. Um, you can break it down. It is a little bit interesting that there is a indication of Biden here. Okay, so he is named here. Um, and Biden's been in office for, you know, what, 47, 48 years? I don't know, however long he's been in, 50, you know, five decades. <laughs> Crazy, man. Um, let's continue. Pearl was uh, a prominent uh, neoconservative conservative official who held an influential position, I'm sorry, 
on my dyslexia. I'm tired tonight, so I'm sure that's not helping. Uh, inf influential position in the administration of U.S. George W. Bush. So we're talking about going back. You know, you're going back into the, the Iraq War and a lot of these things. This is when all this was set up when we we you know went over there and um, went over there for a lot of the oil and different things like that. And we had these supposed mass weapons of destruction. All this stuff was going on. Um, so this was happening, you know, 20 years ago. We're in 2001 or prior to him becoming um, the president. Um, he's being groomed as a prime minister to become the president. Um, serving as a key advisor to the Secretary of Defense Donald Rumfield. Wow, I haven't heard these names in a while. That's interesting. Pearl played a pivotal role in shaping the course of the Iraq War. His involvement extended from 1987 to 2004, during which time he served on the Defense Policy Board Advisory Committee and held the position of chairman from 2001 to 2003. Erdogan's meeting with Pearl and other American officials before becoming Prime Minister were kept secret from the public. Why? Why, why would these be kept secret? And they're just starting to come out 20 years later because these guys are actually exposing this stuff. Former Erdogan associates who had previously shared their accounts with the media revealed that Erdogan, coming from an Islamic and anti-American political background, wow, coming from an Islamic and anti-American political background had conveyed to his counterparts during these meetings that the party he intended to establish would not adopt an anti-American stance, even though he's an extremist longist. <laughs> okay. I'm, I'm just saying, um, you know, when you tell people for 15 years that you're going to reestablish the Ottoman Empire and reestablish the caliphate against the Jews and the Christians, and he's made a pledge about this, that he wants to do this in the 100th year or the centurion year of the demise of the Ottoman Empire in 1923. He wants to do that by the end of this year. This doesn't make any sense, and they should know that. Okay, I'm just saying, I mean, come on, man. I mean, listen to the guy, and you've got to know that he has an agenda. He's ideologically driven. I've been talking about this for a long time. And I'm just, you know, I'm not against Erdogan as a, a person in general. I don't know this man from anything. I don't know anything about him. I've never met this man. But he is biblically, potentially a pawn in God's game here on how we're moving forward and so we need to keep an eye on him and it's the leader from Turkey even if it's not Erdogan it would be the leader from Turkey but Erdogan seems to be that because now he's in a five-year term um, from 2001 to 2026 which is interesting because when you get to 2027 we talk about that potential uh, rapture event and the Feast of Trumpets at least on my calendar. Uh, Pearl recounted his meeting with Erdogan in mid-2002. So he's now probably been elected, okay? He got elected and then he got put into position in 2003 during a conference organized by the American Enterprise Institute, or AEI, in early 2004. So he would be president at that time. He described Erdogan, who was then present in the room as prime minister, to the guests. Pearl mentioned that his friend Erdogan, his friend Erdogan, then advised uh, Sapzu, who called him and asked if he would be interested in meeting the person who might become prime minister. And then it says Pearl gladly accepted the invitation in 2002. So, you know, he's talking about the meeting was in 2004. He's already president. So this was prior. Um, like I say, he was um, brought in as prime minister in the middle of 2002 and then became the president in 2003. 
and that plays right into that paradigm of how long he's been in office with the um, king of Nebuchadnezzar as it works out in the Bible, and I've showed you that on the paradigm. Uh, Pearl said the meeting lasted for about two and a half hours. He shares his impression of the discussion, stating that he left the meeting convinced that Erdogan was a fortunate individual. You know, it's it's almost like they're, oh, I don't want to get political here, but it was it's almost like a grooming of Obama into president because they did that for a long time to get him to where he is and this is a similar thing you got to realize that these people do things over long time periods because they're ideologically driven and it's not driven by a clock or time it's driven by the ideology of the whatever it is they're trying to accomplish just like erdogan's getting ready to build this ottoman empire and they've been waiting for a hundred years but he's going to do it He's going to do it as we move forward. So this Erdogan's an indiv a fortunate individual who uh, would lead a nation where the people looked up to him. Now, I want to stop here real quick for a second, um, right after I read this, because this is really going to get interesting. Pearl described the him as someone who believed in the Turkish state, okay, Ottoman Empire, Turkish state, faith in the Turkish democracy, and would lead the country in a new direction. He expressed the belief that Turkey had long needed new and youthful leadership. So Erdogan visits um, to the U.S. before he took office in 2003. So we're they can document a lot of these visits and stuff um and like i say i'm just taking the word here of this guy based on the article i cannot verify any of this information i'm just presenting it to you as he's presented it to us or me so in 2003 are frequently used in cons okay so this is sort of interesting look at that we're talking about a conspiracy theory that's been built off of this meeting of Erdogan in 2003 as he's becoming a prime minister moving into presidency as he's being groomed into office and 20 years later we are where we are see how this works just saying Erdogan visits the U.S. before he took office in 2003 are frequently used as conspiracy theories by the ultra-nationalist opposition suggesting that contrary to his Islamic image, Erdogan was actually a leader who had a good relationship with Washington. Well, why? Erdogan wants weapons and stuff. And I'm going to show you something really interesting in this video that you should be aware of. And it does deal with weapons and the kinds of weapons that he potentially could have uh, furthermore they present a 2002 white house meeting as evidence to support the allegations when erdogan was received by president bush even though he did not hold an office official state position um, due to court banned on him from running for office According to the ultra-nationalists, Erdogan, during his visit to the United States, agreed to cooperate with the U.S. in I This is extremely important. He agrees to cooperate with the U.S. in Iraq war and allow the U.S. military bases for operation in Iraq by American troops. And you're talking about Saddam Hussein at this point, okay? And when you go into those um, three beasts that Daniel talks about, he talks about Iraq, Iran, and then Turkey, because these are the nations in the order that they will fall as we move forward. Iraq will fall first, that's Saddam. You have the leader of Iran now, he will fall next, and then we will move into Turkey. But they will attack Israel first, and then they will be destroyed on the sixth seal through Ezekiel 38 and 39. So, however, on February 25th of 2003, a motion was presented to the Turkish parliament 
that granted authorization to the government for the deployment of Turkish armed forces to foreign countries and to present a foreign military forces in Turkey. So, you know, they're either part of NATO. Um, right now, there's like, what, 31 countries in NATO right now since they're moving uh, Finland and potentially Sweden in there. So it's they're adding constantly and potentially Ukraine even. Um, but Erdogan's is not going to easily get in the EU because there's a lot of people that do believe he's an extremist. And um, they're not going to allow that probably extension. But he's going to use that as a, a chip to gain favor or weapons or whatever he needs before this invasion that he's coming up. The motion sought um, permission from Parliament for a period of six months allowing the presence of 62,000 foreign military personnel, 255 aircraft, and 65 helicopters in Turkey. Despite the request of then Prime Minister Erdogan, the motion which would have been, which would have enabled the use of Turkey as a base for U.S.-led Iraqi invasion was rejected by Parliament. So, see, they we're not always getting along here, and Erdogan doesn't always, um, or we don't always get our way here, and so we need to watch how this moves forward. So, um, it was rejected in Parliament. Gomez resigned from the uh, AKP and decided not to run for re-election in 2007. He moved to the United Kingdom in 2008. And in 2012, along with ultra-nationalist officers and civilians, he was involved in the uh, Urgenic Khan trial, I believe is how that's said. A case that aimed to dismantle the alleged deep state organization called Urgenicon. I'm not familiar with this uh, term, but I like looking up things, so let's see what it says. It was given a name of an alleged clandestine secular ultra-nationalist organization in Turkey with the possible ties to members of the country's military and security forces. Wow, that's really interesting. And the would-be group named the Ergenicon is a mythical place located in the inaccessible valleys of the Altay Mountains um, was uh, accused of terrorism in Turkey. So that's just some little bit throw down. You guys can look up this. Um, that actually shows you a map of where that is. Um, it's just interesting. Um, little bit of information there. But um, so this organization, which was accused of plotting to overthrow the Erdogan government. Okay, so that's why they're terrorists, because Erdogan's in power, and they're trying to overthrow him and have a coup. However, after Erdogan reaches an agreement with the the officers who had tried, or who were tried in the Erdogan case to pursue uh, bureaucrats and official, uh, oh wow, I'm killing the uh, dyslexia thing, sorry about that. Um, the case to purge bureaucrats and officers affiliated with the, the Golan movement, a group critical of the government, Comas legal cases were dropped and they returned to Turkey in 2020. It's a 20 year process, folks. Comas was uh, elected to parliament in the May of 2023, of course, he just got elected in, so did Erdogan, in May 14th of 2023. As a medical doctor by profession, Comas had previously made striking statements about Erdogan's health, revealing that Erdogan had secretly traveled to the U.S. for cancer surgery and that he accompanied him during the procedure. Now, another thing that I wanted to bring up um, that's the end of this article, but I wanted to give you that information. Um, but now I want to show you something that I think is extremely interesting. So not only is Turkey the second largest 
army in NATO beyond us. So they are the bad boy in the Middle East. Don't ever put these guys down. They will put Russia to shame here as we move forward, as you will see. And they're getting army, they're getting everything ready for an invasion. They just bartered these 20 uh, kits to repair their F-16s. And they are one of five members in the North Atlantic Treaty Organization, or NATO, to host U.S. nuclear weapons. Okay. They possibly have nuclear weapons now it's been said that they've given them up but that's not what this is indicating it indicates that they approximately have 21 b61 nuclear bombs which are deployed at this air base and that air base is located in turkey right here and i've talked about this area here as a real problem where I believe the invasion will occur. Well, they aren't going to allow anyone to get nuclear weapons. And so if Erdogan started an invasion here and then they did a pushback, or the Kurds did a pushback to maybe try to um, cut this off, we're pretty close to that. Makes you a little concerned about how that could play out. So I'm just saying... There is a nuclear capacity here, something that nobody talks about when you talk about Turkey. But they do have this capacity. They are one of the five members of NATO that actually do have nuclear weapons. They're ours. They're the U.S.'s. They potentially have 20 of these B1, uh, B61 nuclear bombs, and they're employed in a place where potentially they could impact the Middle East. Um, I've never thought it was a nuclear event because I believe God will not radiate any portion of the areas that he wants his prophecy to play out in because, you know, we're trampling Jerusalem and the Temple Mount and all these different things. I don't really necessarily think he wants uh, Israel uh, radiated so people can't go there. I don't think he wants necessarily Turkey radiated because that potentially is where the seat of the beast, well, it is where the seat of the beast or Satan is and potentially where Pergamos Turkey potentially could be Mystery Babylon, as I've talked about. So he doesn't want these things destroyed in a nuclear event. I know a lot of people talk about Isaiah 21, and how that could be, um, or I think it's Isaiah 17, maybe, um, where it potentially could be a nuclear event. But I believe if you look at that, it might be that six seal event where he's dropping stars on them and um, disease and plagues are taking them over. And um, God is actually destroying these armies, which is an irradiated event. Um but that's my speculation on that. We'll see how that turns out as we move forward if we're still here. Um, I just thought this was really interesting. I thought it's extremely important. I think this article is very telling that this has been a process in play for over 20 years. I'm still trying to wrap my head around that this could be a 20 year process that has actually started to take place back in 2002 and has moved all the way to 2023. And this man right now is getting ready to do a massive invasion that's going to change the Middle East, change fuel prices, change hyper and, you know, force things to get hyperinflated and potentially a stagflation come up is going to really hurt people. And so if you haven't started to get ready, you need to, but yeah, go ahead and read this article. Um, please share the video if you think it's pertinent to what's going on. Um, you know, like the video. Um, you know, I'm not, I, ne I need to get this message out to people. It's not about the liking and all that. It actually helps the 
the message go out and so more people see it and so hopefully um, we can produce this so people can actually be informed and they then can go out and do what's necessary to protect their families as they see these things move forward you have a road map you can see it coming that allows you to prepare easier and it also cuts the anxiety down so that you're not so scared as this moves forward god bless